Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion. So we were at a point where we have built the clock tree and the clock tree was built in such a fashion that it maintained zero skew between the launch flop and the capture flop. For example, if this was the launch flop and if this was the capture flop, we made sure that the clock tree maintain that the clock tree that we have built maintain a zero skew. By skew we mean the latency difference between between the uh, between the clock port to this particular flip flop clock pin minus the clock port with this particular flip flop clock pin. Okay, that's basically the latency, the difference, the, that's basically the skew, the difference in the latency uh, of this clock and this clock. And we have talked uh, a lot about uh, latency, skew, and all those things in the in the in the CTS videos. In the CTS videos that has been up uploaded on Udemy, you might want to have a look into those videos. So next is the clock net shielding. So clock nets are considered to be the critical nets in your design because because we have built the clock tree in such a fashion that we have zero skew. But accidentally, if there is something, if there is, if there, there is a, a phenomena, there is a phenomena of crosstalk that can happen. If that phenomena occurs on these lines, your everything, whatever you have designed in the clock side, that might get deteriorated. And how we have, uh, we have, uh, uh, we have a complete course on uh, on crosstalk that has been uploaded on Udemy. You might want to have a look into uh, those videos. But before that, let's me let me give you a brief uh, brief discussion on clock net shielding. So what we do is we take all the clock nets. For example, let's say we will take an example of this particular clock net. We take this particular clock net and shield it, something like this. By shielding, what we do, we protect this clock nets from the outside world. It's like we are we are encapsulating this clock nets to keep to be protected from the outside world. It's like a house for the clock net. Okay. So any any signal which is lying, let's say any signal which any uh, net which is lying over here, any wire which is lying over here, there will be some activities happening on that particular wire, and that activities, if the coupling capacitance between that wire and this particular uh, net is very huge, then there will there might be some coupling happening between the wire which is sitting over here and the and this and this clock net. And as a result of that, there are there are a couple of problems. There are two problems basically. One is glitch and one is delta delay. Okay, so we have talked about glitch and delta delay in complete detail in in the crosstalk in the crosstalk videos. So uh, let me give a brief uh, description on that. So what happens if there is a glitch? First of all, what is a glitch? So uh, just uh, for example, consider this as one of the clock nets. Though it shows the uh, uh, reset pin, let's let us consider this is one of the clock nets or one of the nets one of the nets and this is the aggressor so when whenever there is a switching activity happening on the aggressor because of the coupling capacitance and the coupling capacitance is so strong that any activity happening over here will directly impact the net which is sitting close to it and this is the net we are talking about without shielding this is a clock net without shielding what can go wrong okay and as a result of that you see there is a glitch over here so this victim was supposed to be at logic 1 but because of this particular aggressor getting from logic 1 to logic 0 you see there is a dip in the voltage and as a result of that you see a glitch and what can go wrong if you see this kind of glitch you it so for example if this was your memory and memory was initiated with numbers like the, whatever you see over here this was the this was supposed to be the memory contents accidentally because of this particular glitch getting inverted by with this particular inverter you might receive a logic high at the reset pin and your complete memory might get reset and this memory could be a part of any automobile chip or any of the any of the uh, any of the high any of the critical chip and if that thing ha if if it's a part of a critical a critical chip then if then this thing goes wrong then the complete system goes wrong so that's why the glitch has become increasingly important factor to be considered while doing a clock tree building or while doing a, a, a basically while doing a vlsi design while doing physical design while routing this particular uh, uh, phenomena has become an increasing point of concern for all the vls engineers and, and 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 all of them are working towards it so shielding is one of the technique that will actually that will actually protect this particular victim so shielding basically says that we put a line over here we put a wire we put a wire over here and this wires are connected either to vdd or ground because vdd and ground are the ones with which which won't switch and as a result of that your victim is protected so we have talked about all all of them all of the uh, this phenomena in the crosstalk videos uh, which has been uploaded on Udemy you might uh, want to have a look into uh, those videos so yes this is the technique we shield it we basically by shielding we are breaking the coupling capacitance between the aggressor and the victim okay so shields are either connected to both the uh, we, we, we place a wire over here we place a wire over over here and either both the shields are connected to vdd or they are connect, connected to ground or one is connected to vdd one is connected to ground the the idea is the shields don't switch 
and if the shields don't switch there is a there is very high very less possibility that the victim will switch there are other problems where there are ground bounds and voltage droop so we have talked about all those in the crosstalk videos okay and there is one more thing that can happen this is this is we uh, talked about glitch but what happens if there is uh, if the victim itself was switching and the aggressor is also switching then what can go wrong so let's say this was the clock tree that we have built we have just taken the clock tree from the uh, from the above circuit and placed it in an ideal way so for example this is the clock port okay this is one of the flops and this is one of there is one of there is one flop over here and there is one flop over here and we have built the clock tree in such a fashion that we maintain a zero skew so by zero skew we mean that let's say the latency of this particular uh, of the, uh, latency from this clock port to this to, uh, to this point of the flop is l1 okay and let's say the the latency from this clock port to this flop which is sitting over here it is not shown but it is sitting over here is l2 before crosstalk if it is if it was l2 so we may we build this clock tree in such a fashion that l1 is equal to l2 okay but now what happens because of crosstalk if you see there is some amount of delta delay there is some amount of glitch so for example this is the uh, this is the line victim line the input of the victim line is switching from logic 0 to logic 1 so output of the inverter will be logic 1 to logic 0 it is supposed to go from logic 1 to logic 0 okay but what can go wrong because of this particular glitch that you see it might impact the logic 1 to logic 0 direction by some amount of delta delay Okay, if you see this particular thing, there is uh, it was going from logic one to logic zero, but it at on the on, on its path it sees a uh, uh, it sees the aggressor moving from logic zero to logic one. As a result of that, this particular thing tries to charge and then again gets discharged. And because of this amount of bump, you see an amount of delay. You see an amount of delta delay while switching from logic one to logic zero. And as a result of that, the delay of this particular cell gets impacted. So initially, if the delay of this particular cell is D, after after the crosstalk delta delay, you see the delay of this particular cell is D plus delta. And let's say if this clock cell was a part of L2, if this clock cell was part of L2, this particular cell delay, which was supposed to be D, now it is D plus delta. Your complete L2, which was supposed, your complete latency, which was supposed to be L2, is now L2 plus delta. So now your skew becomes L1 minus L2 plus delta. So the, it's no more zero. There is some finite value delta. And imagine we have talked about only let's say few buffers, handful of buffers. It's like five to six buffers. If the clock tree was a, was for a multi-million chip, this delta might might grow very exponentially or linearly. Okay, so that's the impact of crosstalk, and we are trying to protect our clock nets from crosstalk by by uh, by by putting a shield around the clock nets. So shielding is one of the technique to protect uh, uh, protect uh, the uh, the nets from crosstalk. There are other techniques as well. We have talked about them in the crosstalk videos. You might want to ha have a look into those videos. These slides are being taken from there, and there are there are a lot more slides which talks on the similar lines. Okay, so that so that's the uh, idea of um, uh, that that's the idea of crosstalk, and this is the reason we shield the clock nets. Ideally, we are supposed to shield this one also, but we are we have just left it that way. So 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 this net will also get shielded something like this. So the idea is we have to shield all the critical nets. Clock nets is one of the critical nets, and let's say if there are some data nets which are also supposed to be critical, we will be will be uh, will be drawing the data nets in the in the next video. But if there are data nets which are very critical, it is it is uh, it becomes necessary to shield them. But it's not always possible to shield all of the all of the nets in the design because that might just increase the routing resources over here. As a result of that, we we take the clock nets, we we take the critical nets and shield them. And clock nets are one of them. Okay, so after we have done with the clock net shielding, the next the next step is to do again a timing analysis with real clocks because now we have the clock nets and now we have the clock net shielded. So so it, so this is the point where we have to do a timing with real clocks. Though the data paths are not routed, we'll be doing a timing analysis with with real clocks, and that's the part of the flow. That's the part of an ideal flow. Okay, so what we'll do is I will we'll talk about this particular slide in the next video since I'm already running out of time. So let's continue about uh, let's continue understanding about this particular equation and how does the clock delay looks like in the next video. Thank you.